Music is a beautiful thing that can be used to inspire and heal. But one of the last things you would expect it to be used for is torture. However, that's exactly what happened at Guantanamo Bay Prison. And when industrial music group Skinny Puppy, founded by Kevin Key and Nivik Over, Ogre, excuse me, discovered that their music was being used in this way, they decided to do something about it. The band sent an invoice to the Pentagon for $666,000. It was a ballsy move, but nothing out of the ordinary for such a politically conscious group, one that's used its music to drive awareness about issues ranging from animal testing to nuclear power. Well, Skinny Puppy happens to be on tour right now, and I was not only lucky enough to catch their show, but I also got a chance to sit down with frontman Nivik Ogre. I first asked him, as one of the pioneers of industrial music, how the band has maintained its political charge in the genre after all these years. I think I was telling you, I think sometimes we exist in order to give the impression of freedom of speech in America, but I'll grab that as much as I can. And older industrial music used to be uh, far more politicized, Throbbing Gristle, Genesis Peorage. Uh, they did things to try and rock the establishment a little bit and shake things up and open perception and opened uh, people's eyes to, you know, the realities that were outside, you know, and changed kind of the musical concept in the sense of uh, musically it was about any instrument. Um, any sound, any any form of uh, you know musical structure was allowed as long as it wasn't um, you know the norm per se. Skinny Puppy uses a lot of theatrics like blood, masks, uh, gore on stage. What are you trying to portray by using these elements during your live performances? Well, I've always, we've always used those types of things to try and um, shock people into awakening. And on one tour, we actually used um, some Japanese footage called Guinea Pig. It was it wasn't real. At the time, we weren't really sure either, and it was uh, basically almost snuff TV. And so we started, during one of the songs, incorporating some of it in to see what the reaction was to our fans who kind of, you know, would, would embrace the blood and the mud and all that stuff and knew what we were doing. But we, once we in, incorporated that footage, there was revulsion. And so I realized that there is a difference between how people react to, you know, theater versus what they feel is reality. And, and it gave me some hope in a lot of ways that, you know, people, you know, weren't just kind of continuing down this path of, of looking for more and more, you know, death, blood, uh, to, to, to fill that, that, that vacuum in, in what, what I see as a powerless nation. And I wanted to move on to your music, one of my brother and my favorite songs, uh, The Killing Game. I wanted to read our audience a portion of the lyrics. After playing mean changes toys into tools, twisted playthings on the staircase fools, fools weapons represents the killing game. Who taught the killing game? Ogre, I've always considered this kind of an anti-war ballad. Uh, what does it mean to you? Well, it means, it means the idea of, of taking that one step beyond and, and, and actually uh, using violence as a way to solve something. And so I see, you know, within a lot of, you know, first world nation stuff, it's like, you know, we've created a lot of the conflicts mm -hmm. and a lot of the blowback and a lot of the, um, the stuff that, uh, you know, people kind of go, well, why do they hate us? It's, it's like, well, there's a lot of reasons why. And if you look back historically, you can see that there's, uh, there's, there's, there's certainly a litany of things that, you know, create the idea of who really taught the killing game first, you know, and, and at times, in, 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 in the case of, of killing game, it was, uh, I was using myself as the, as the reference point, but I think it, it goes out beyond that. Skinny Puppy, I, I've always tried to use, you know, I've certainly had my own folly through, through life, and, and uh, I've learned a lot of lessons, and I've come through quite a bit, and, uh, you know, all of that I tried to kind of relate to a more externalized viewpoint. Vivisect 6 was your fourth studio album. Uh, in it, the single test year, the video for which shows a kid who abused his dog <clears throat> getting actually brutally abused himself and experimented on. Talk about the concept of the song, the album, and why you wanted to create a piece of work that not only called attention to the issue, but wanted to portray animal experimentation in such a way. Well, I always, you know, I've always been, um, you know, um, very hurt or, um, you know, angry about the fact that we commodify animals. To me, I've always thought animals have souls. And, and when I was younger, I was called out in it so many times. But science is starting to prove that the consciousness in animals is far greater than we once 
thought it was to the point that um, some scientists are even saying that most animals are the same as us with consciousness. And I certainly look at my dogs and my cats and their personalities. You know, absolutely, and <laughs> absolutely. You know, way beyond. So, 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 sometimes they have senses that are way beyond what I see, and I think our perceptions are different. And I think that, you know, for better or for worse, we're all we're all here together. And, uh, and animals are proving to be the canaries in the coal mine of, of so many things. Exactly. Yeah, the voiceless creatures. I mean, and they can't speak out. And that's started out as being was the idea of life through a dog's eyes, seeing all these injustices and seeing things that it couldn't talk about and all it could do was really bark. And, uh, and, wow. and, and, and again, due to my um, lack of vocal training when I was young, it actually came out that way, of a, of a disembodied voice that was, that was unintelligible. You know, Ogre, this, this was in the 80s when you guys made this album. How do you feel now to see animal rights activists actually looked at as terrorists under the Animal Enterprise Horrifying. Terrorism Act? Horrified. And in fact, I got a letter just the other day of somebody that's um, uh, actively involved in a chimp rescue program, and they were set up by the FBI, and three of their members got arrested. So I'm going to look into that and see if there's anything we can do. But yeah, I mean, you know, I was around when ALF was doing their thing, the Animal Liberation Front, and admittedly, I think that they started off with um, a little heavy handed, maybe, and, and, and then there may have been a better way of going about it. I always think that there's a kinder, gentler approach. In Philadelphia, there was a, there was a, a research experiment that was using sudden impact head injuries, and they were using uh, chimpanzees that they'd lock into a, a chair with a head restraint and locked right in. It was just a horrible machine. And they, they just simulate these sudden impact head injuries. And to me, I was going, there's such a false sense to that because the animal, if, if, if you or I experienced a sudden impact head injury, we wouldn't be aware of it coming. And these animals were completely aware of what was going on. Their adrenaline was up, so all of their body chemistry was, I'm sure, well, I'm sure, you know, all of the all of the results of it were absolutely useless. This guy actually was, was arrested and jailed after ALF went in and exposed all of this. So I, I can see the need for all this stuff. And yes, with these new laws coming out, all of that kind of dissent is being, you know, shut down much in the same way as the Secrecy Act in Japan. Uh, with any reporting on Fukushima or radiation. Ag-gag laws. Speaking of torture, though, your band is obviously now infamously known uh, for producing your new album, Weapon, as a literal invoice for the U.S. government for using your songs to torture Gitmo prisoners. Bring us back to how you found out that this happened. This goes way back to our album, The Greater Wrong of the Right, and we did a documentary on depleted uranium in the battlefield. And we had access to uh, the Gulf War uh, Veterans Administration, Stephen Robinson, and we interviewed Ramsey Clark. When we started to do Weapon, we contacted those people and sent invoices through them and did, you know, the album was supposed to be cover art and an invoice. And we were going to take the show on the road and, uh, and torture people on stage. And of course, you know, we're a small band and we probably would have been shut down. And, and so we, we, we switched things around and then I found kind of a more of an abstract with weapons. Um, but in the meantime, I was on a tour and a, a guard who had worked in Guantanamo who was taken across. He was military police over here. He was given two weeks of training and then sent to the World Trade Center and said, this is what they did to you and then sent over to look after all these prisoners. And he was a very kind, gentle person and went over and was so affected by it that he, um, he was honorably discharged at the end and he converted to become a Muslim. He has uh, extreme post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. So I started seeing kind of like, not only are the prisoners developing post-traumatic stress from this torture, um, but our own men and women, you know, who have you know, a, a moral slant and, and have empathy are being affected by it too. And uh, so uh, from, 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 from his research, he saw our, our music was being used um, to torture. And it's not just us. After that, we found out it goes everything from Barney to Britney Spears. Sesame Street. Yeah, it's Freaky. just, I mean, it's, it's, you know, six to 12 hours of anything being blasted at high volume in a cold room where you're shackled at the ankles. Uh, you know, prostrate and, and you know, people coming in pouring cold water onto you until you, you know, either urinate or defecate yourself. And then they come in and berate you about it. I mean, it's just horrifying to me. And, uh, you know, of course, our music is unsettling. And when he first asked me, how do you feel about your music being used? I said, well, I can certainly see why they would use that, but it doesn't make it any easier for us to, 
Right. I mean, how did uh, I can't even imagine being so passionate about animal right. torture to know that your music was actually used to torture human beings. Yeah, and, and people that weren't used to music either, you know, culturally, you know, so, you know and that's that's the other thing that kind of got to me. So we were going to do an album um, where we actually uh, researched all the frequencies for torture, do a narrative with songs, and then have aspects um, with a booklet that would that would say, okay, now we put the hood over. At the water, <laughs> start music now, and then we were going to insert in that subliminals in different um, dialects, Pashtun, wh whatever, uh, saying things like, you know, although this music sounds horrible and terrible and scary, please understand that in our country it's used uh, to fight the very thing that's torturing you right now. Wow. Has anyone from the U.S. government responded to um, the invoice? The BBC, it, it went uh, through this game of telephone, which I'm sure you're aware of. And uh, again, uh, you know, I just want to say that we didn't uh, come out. This was an old story for us. Mm -hmm. We had kind of, you know, Weapon came out last year, and a lot of the press came out before that. We didn't go out of our way to make this happen. It was one sentence in an interview that Kevin did in the Phoenix Times that, that got taken and it just went for some reason. And uh, so we didn't look for any publicity, so much so that we didn't even say in, in the interviews that I've done that we're, we're touring right now. You know? <laughs> so, so um, 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 you know, we, 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 we were just as surprised as anybody that it went this viral, you know? Yeah, yeah. And if you do get the money from the government, what do you intend to do with it? We're going to donate to post-traumatic stress. For sure, if anything. And I just want to say, so I went to the BBC, and the BBC is, uh, you know, they uh, came up with a statement saying that they had got in touch with the Pentagon, and uh, they could neither deny nor confirm receipt of our invoices. So now we've gone on uh, and, and, and resent the invoices, because we've gotten new connections with new uh, addresses of the Department of Defense and the uh, Department of Intelligence. Um, let's talk about your newest music. I mean, there seems to be still an overtly um, anti-U.S. militarism message in the latest works Mythmaker and Weapon, but you said in an interview with Critical Mass in 2007, I think I've tried to peer away from going on a really hell-bent political rant again, but Ogre, do you still feel this way given, you know, such heroic whistleblowers, uh, Bradley Manning, um, Edward, I'm sorry, Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, that now is the time to get hell banned, not just for Skinny Puppy, but for pretty much all artists. It is, it is, it is really, for sure. And, and, and I think, you know, um, I think probably when I said that was during the Bush administration, because myself and Al Jorgensen from Ministry were just, you know, Al was beating the drum, and I was just like, you know, you can go a little too far to one side without realizing that, you know, the pendulum swings back and forth, and sometimes I'm starting to believe that this is more of a centrist government. And, uh, you know, it leans to the left, leans to the right, but the, the direction is all the same, you know. And so I think, you know, people need to be educated about that. And, and yeah, I think, you know, we'll always do things like that. I can't think of any other way of presenting Skinny Puppy without that. But I, I'm finding as I get older, there's abstracts to things that, that I'm kind of interested in. And, and you see, you know, the weaponization um, of, uh, or you see the military industrial complex, which again, um, 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 you know, in, in a lot of ways has taken root in this country. Um, so much that um, you're seeing things like nuclear power plants that are loaded with spent, spent fuel uh, that are just sitting out in the open, you know, leaking. And I see that just as much as, as a weapon against, you know, uh, the citizens of our own country. I think these whistleblowers are wonderful. And, I, you know, I, I applaud Edward Snowden and Chelsea Manning for what they did. I think it's uh, the bravest thing in the world, especially with such a, a huge, you know, a Kafka-esque sort of um, machine that's clamping down on them and uh, demonizing them and uh, finding every little, again, you know, finding every little thing about, you know, them and putting it out there without... You know, you're talking about weaponizing the world and it really does seem impenetrable at this point, but as Chris Hedges said, I don't fight fascists because I will win. I fight fascists because they're fascists. Right. <laughs> your album is out. It's been out for a while. You're touring right now. Tell people about where they can find your music and your uh, tour. I'm going to run iTunes and uh, we'll, be, we'll be touring in Philadelphia, New York, up in Canada, then across to the West Coast and all points west from that point. So we're about halfway through right now and uh, I'm having a blast. It's one of the funnest tours I've been on. Thank you so much, Thank you for having Ogre. Me, Vocalist, skinny puppy, really appreciate it. Thank you very much.